Did your dad happen to see any of your films? You know, I don't think he did see any of them, but he did because I actually started painting when I was like 16, 17, 18. And I know he really, he liked my paintings, <laughs> but he never, I don't think he ever saw any of my films. What were you painting? I was painting a lot of female subjects, a lot of like female form, um, but I can't, I personally did not enjoy painting. And I think it was, you know, uh, talking to to an art teacher about like what I mean do you do you even enjoy the process of painting or is painting kind of more like an obstacle for you that you have to overcome in order to you know produce this final image that you have in your mind and I was like yeah it's 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 more the latter it's more that and he was like well you might want to consider you know photography or or film or video because if you're not really interested in in painting as a process if it's more about the image, then this might not be the right medium for you. Were you using uh, watercolors or acrylics or? Oil. Oil, okay, wow. Oil, yeah. Wow. But I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure, I mean, most people usually start with like acrylics and watercolor and then they'll like work their way up to, to oil. Just because it requires, I mean, more money because <laughs> oil paints are not cheap. Um, and a lot of technique as well. What do you think he would have thought of your feature film? I hope that he would like it. I hope he would laugh because he liked to laugh. Uh, I'd like to. I'd, I'd like to think that he would, at the very least, find it entertaining. Yeah. When your art teacher said that to you, was I'm assuming you approached them and said that the process was super hard and, and confided in them. How did you take that news? Was that an insult or was it in like sort of liberating because then you realized maybe this isn't the medium for you? I think it was, I think it was liberating because it got me excited about something new. You know, like the first time you, you know, you pick up uh, like an, an SLR, you know, and you load the film and then you're experimenting with the settings with like the shutter speed and the aperture and all of that. And it's, and I mean, you know, developing your first role of black and white film is amazing. It feels like a discovery. Obviously it's not because people have been developing black and white film for, you know, a very long time now. But when you're a teenager and it's your first time in a dark room, it's magical. Like, you know, you're never going to get that, that kind of moment again. So it was definitely very, it was very special. Once your art teacher said that, then you picked up the camera and do you remember what you started shooting? Um, yeah, I mean, I remember because I was I was still in in Lisbon at the time. And I was also I like I spent the summer in London. And because I was such a big fan of Cindy Sherman, like I did a bit of that. Kind oh, nice. of like the, you know, you know, femininity is a masquerade and kind of experimenting with like different looks. And what does it mean to be using your own appropriating your own form as a woman making art? So that was definitely a big, uh, a big influence. And then also, you know, um, taking pictures in, in Lisbon, which is such a beautiful city and kind of like finding like, you know, different perspectives on a place that to me was so familiar. Do you ever look back at those photos now? I do. I do. I mean, and especially for the for the Cindy Sherman ones, I, I made like great big posters of those. Yeah. Yeah, I know Cindy Sherman. There was a documentary. I think it was done in the '90s, and it showed her, and she wanted to talk about her perspective of being a woman walking on the street in New York City and these different things. And um, did you do anything of that? Sort of the the react the being out in public and maybe expectation or. Um, I mean, I didn't, I mean, I didn't do anything along those lines and I, but I did like, there were a couple of performance pieces that I did devise and I thought about doing, but they were more about like, you know, manipulating your own form and kind of controlling the way that you are seen by the viewer. 
So it was less kind of like that direct interaction. And I mean, like, you know, there's so many, you know, a female artists have, have done such, you know, amazing work that they've like directly interacted with, with audience members, you know, like um, Valerie Export, yeah. And also Yoko Ono. I mean, she was a pioneer in that way before Marina Abramovich, you know, no shade, <laughs> but <laughs> she was, you know, before. Um, so no, I didn't, I didn't quite do anything like, like that, but I was aware that the female artists were doing it, yeah. And you said your, your mother was also an artist too? No, my mother was a French teacher. Oh, I'm sorry, okay, I guess because you said she enjoyed watching the films. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. So, so then how many languages did you speak growing up? Um, so Portuguese, English, Spanish, um, because, you know, Portuguese and Spanish are very similar, so it's pretty easy to learn one if you know the other. Uh, and also Hebrew. Oh, okay, wow. Because, um, because we, are, we are of Jewish descent, German-Jewish descent, uh, and also French. We didn't really have a choice. We had to speak French because my mother, <laughs> mother was like, you're going to have to learn French. Wow. Yeah. So all those different languages, and did you also explore films from all those different areas? For sure. So Godard and, yeah. and different people, okay. Yeah, I'm a big fan of French, French cinema for, for sure, absolutely. And Spanish cinema too, as well, yeah. And so at what point did you even explore American cinema? It sounds like you had so many great influences. Would you even, would you even delve into that, or maybe you did? I mean, I did, I did do a couple of like film workshops in, in Lisbon when I was in high school. And obviously like one of the first films that they're going to show you is Citizen Kane. Like that's... Sure, that's true. A staple, <laughs> right? You're not, yeah. you're not going to do mm -hmm. any course in like, you know, film history or film theory and not watch Citizen Kane. Um, so that was probably one of the first like kind of like classic um, references of American cinema that I was exposed to. I'm always envious of people that grow up in Europe or, or different, you know, abroad because it seems like they get such, um, they, they are exposed to many more worlds. It seems mm -hmm. like maybe it's just been a few years since I've been in school. So it seems like here in the U.S. we're not as exposed to, to some of that, maybe more so now. But I think you just get so many more mm -hmm. flavors of and different slices of life. And I think that probably really shapes people's mm -hmm. art and their and their outlook and that's really cool. Wow, it sounds like you had some really just interesting, you want to talk about, a, 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 we were talking earlier about Robert Rodriguez and saying mm -hmm. that it's like making a stew or, you know, yeah. making some kind of food. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you just had all these different things that you could add yeah. to your palette of, mm -hmm. of ideas. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Was there an actress similar to like Marilyn Monroe back in the day in, in Portugal? Someone that had this like awe and mystery around them. You know, you talked about you, you were interested in the idea of femininity and sort of the, the perceptions of what women had to be. Were there any icons? I know you talked about Sophia Loren and mm -hmm. she was very international, but in, in Portugal? I mean, well, she's obviously not of the same decade as Marilyn Monroe, but um, Maria de Medeiros is very interesting and she was in Pulp Fiction. Right, okay. So the, mm -hmm. the, I can't quite remember the name of her character, but she played Bruce Willis's girlfriend. Right, okay. That's Maria de Medeiros, who is, who is Portuguese um, and is an excellent actress and was just, you know, amazing in that film. And her chemistry with Bruce Willis is, you know, impeccable. Um, and she's someone who also is not just an actress, she also directs. Ah, okay. So that's very inspiring to be like, you know, a Portuguese uh, woman who has, you know, who's, you know, started off acting, but now has progressed into being a filmmaker in her own right. When you were applying for college, going to London, where did you envision you would be a decade out? Did you have an idea of what you wanted for yourself? I mean, when I applied to art school, I think definitely the end goal was to become, you know, a professional artist. So that's, you know, at least back then, that's that was a different path. Like you would maybe be, you know, signed to a gallery and then you would, you know, apply for residencies, you would apply for funding, you would get... Um, and then you would be able to kind of make your own work and then that work would be shown in galleries and then it would go to museums. It would, you know, it's, that's kind of the trage 
trajectory that I thought I was going to have back then. So more as a visual artist in, in terms of, mm -hmm. I know you said with the painting, that was something that you sort of abandoned, but you had other, you, you said just more like video, like mm -hmm. sort of ex, exhibitions and things like that. So that's kind of where I thought I was, mm -hmm. I was heading. Wow, interesting. And then somehow just the filmmaking bug, it bit you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it took you to LA, to UCLA. It's one of the best screenwriting programs and, and, and just the energy behind it, you think, just kind of your need to tell stories? Yes. And to also have, um, to try and have a sustainable career because I think, you know, definitely it was something that they said to us after we graduated from, from university where I was doing my, my undergraduate degree. It was like, oh, if you wanna, if you wanna be taken seriously as an artist, if you really wanna consider this as a, as a career, you have to do a master's. Like you have to, you must. And, and to be honest, like my, my peers who have done well, they did all do a master's degree. So it's, it was true. And for me, like, cause I had also done a foundation degree before doing the four years at the Slate. I'd already been like, you know, five years in like academic institutions. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> I'm not ready to do a master's right now. So it was like, okay, well then what else can I do? So then you decided to move and you added, you moved to LA and you added, so it was a two year program at UCLA? It was, I mean, in my degree, usually people take on average four years to, to complete the MFA in production slash directing. And, and you already completed it and it was how long? I took three years and a quarter. Oh, okay. Would you advise that other, either writers, artists, um, filmmakers, any, any type of creative pursuit always go for a master's degree? I mean, it depends. I mean, there are some very successful filmmakers who did not go to film school. And that's, that's a fact. I don't know if that's, if it's like 50, 50, you know, half of the successful filmmakers in, in Hollywood didn't go to film school and the other half did I don't I don't know what the percentages are, but I mean I can say that one of the big advantages of going to film school is is the is the community is the network of like-minded collaborators that you will meet. But if you have access to that without having to go to film school, then maybe that's that's all you need. Maybe. Hmm. Okay. And have you ever seen someone use that and over rely on that and not maybe do? the work it takes, you know, because it, it sounds like you need, you need a, a combination of both. The, the degree, the knowing what the rules are so you can break them, and then just like you said, the hustle never stops or whatever, <laughs> which, that, I mean, I know I've heard that, but I guess it just sort of solidified for me today. But do you see people sometimes maybe relying too much on the fact that they had the degree and not actually going out there like you did mm -hmm. and knowing, okay, I have this opportunity at this high school. I know a teacher, especially who, or I'm, I'm sorry, I don't even know if he was a teacher. I just assumed. He was, he was. Oh, he was. Okay. Mm -hmm. That, that, that is, is simpatico with me and we're, we're, we're doing this. Um, and, and, but they just, they want to be picked and you knew that you had to. I mean, what, what I have seen is like, you know, um, young filmmakers who have gone through film schools and they have, you know, one short film that does well, that maybe goes to, you know, the Cine Fondation, which is, which is at Cannes or Berlin. And they think, okay, now people are going to come to me. I've done enough. Like, I don't need to keep, you know, hustling. I don't need to keep, you know, making my own connections, making my own contacts, working on my own material, like really keeping the engine going. And the truth is, is that in, in this day and age, there's so much competition that I think that if you don't keep striving, that you will fall behind. And I have seen that happen to some. Some filmmakers think that, you know, now that I've had a little bit of success, I can just, you know, you know, cross my arms and like sit back because it's all going to come to me. And I just it doesn't really tend to happen that way. So you won't rest on your Sundance success? I can't. I have to, what I have to do now is, um, you know, what what any good manager will tell you is like you have to capitalize on the buzz before the buzz dissipates. Yeah.